Films and shows like Little Women Dickinson and Emma have been lighting up screens with gorgeous period sets and costumes characterized by surprising colors and a riot of patterns. Audiences and critics alike have pointed out how fresh all of this art direction looks. Distinctly different from the period rooms and costumes in the Jane Austen adaptations of the 1990s. And akin to color stories seen in Wes Anderson films, fashion runways, Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette, and the world of interiors. Is all this some ahistorical millennial fantasy conjured to suit the tastes of our times? Actually, no. Remember how people used to think ancient sculptures and paintings should look like this? Well, in the same way they were wrong about that, new discoveries about material degradation and new technologies have allowed researchers to strip away the layers of grime and cobwebs obscuring the past, revealing that history was as colorful and pattern-filled as today, and in many cases even more so. For instance, rooms in the governor's palace in Colonial Williamsburg, formerly bear-stained wood or colors muted by centuries of soil, dust, and smoke, were repainted, sometimes in surprisingly bright hues. In a more dramatic example, at the Soane Museum in London, former director Peter Thornton reinstated the sulfuric yellow walls of the drawing room that we see still today. It's only natural that the gradual glow-up happening in the museum world has influenced films and shows, too. Consider Emma. The bright pastels, candy colors, saturated hues, and surprising color juxtapositions are drawn straight from the neoclassical palette of Robert Adam and Regency decoration, itself recently rediscovered in all its vibrancy because of historical research, including studies of ceramics, which haven't faded like fabric and paper do. As well as vibrant colors, Little Women, Emma, and Dickinson all feature a profusion of printed cottons not frequently seen in film and television before the digital era. Here, new technology also plays a major role. Critically, digital printing makes it easier to cheaply print just enough of an archival pattern for a single costume. Silk satins and muslins, old favorites for period dramas, continue to be used, but printed cottons are now joining them in ever greater variety and creating a fuller and more accurate picture of what people wore in 1815 or the 1860s. The same pattern explains wallpaper's vibrancy, both in movies and in the real world. Wood pulp paper, what most wallpapers were and are made of, degrades and loses color pretty easily, making historic wallpapers hard to come by. With digitization, we're seeing the re-emergence of patterned wallpaper and historic decoration in a much more permanent and ubiquitous form. Archived patterns can be easily reproduced ad infinitum, whether on walls or coasters or stationery. Think museum gift shop. Both Dickinson and Emma use wallpapers made by the company Adelphi. While it's been possible to digitally reproduce wallpapers for some time, Adelphi's painstakingly historically accurate reproductions have moved the needle forward even more, into the realm of craft. All films and shows set in the past draw on historical research to an extent, but they were limited to what was known at the time and to available technologies. For example, many of the costumes in the 1990s Emma starring Gwyneth Paltrow are more historically accurate than their predecessors. But the film's art direction and set design is redolent of the English country house look popularized by Colfax and Fowler, which has as much to do with the 20th century as the Regency period. The colors range between dusty pastels and warm sunny neutrals, as well as mottled ochre walls, an effect achieved with special decorative paint treatments, just like Colfax and Fowler's and later Mario Bawada's, and just like the ones in the English Rococo room at the Met which was recently painted a more accurate flat yellow in the redesign of the British galleries, just like the walls in the latest adaptation of Emma. Historical accuracy seems like a litmus test that might lead to a stuffy and profoundly boring product. Yet what's interesting about Emma, Little Women, and Dickinson is that, for the most part, they're both historically accurate and fashionable.
As more discoveries about historic styles are made, they're breaking down tired ideas about what's cool and uncool and driving tastes in fashion and interiors. From Benjamin Moore's CW color collection on our walls to the fashion designer Batsheva's sewing machine, and we'll continue seeing them reflected on runways and in shelter magazines in ways that feel new, even when they're really, really not. 